Barry White. Damn. This is a guy who has a deep ass voice. You know who Barry, Barry White is? Uh-uh. Can't get enough of yo. That's the yo, one that man. sounds crazy. Yeah. Don't do that in my ear. Yeah. Hey, yo, yo, hey, don't do that. He's got the vibe. Yeah, He's looking straight in Don't do eyes. that in my ear. He's, He's like, hey, I can't get enough. Yo. <laughs> yo, cut off. Yo, this shit, <laughs> show is done, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to research Barry White? Is that what you're going to go? Nadine, what's good? Like, what's, what's happening? Uh, I'm nervous, but. We're trying to, like, make this not. It's uh, n- it's not intimidating. It's literally just how my brain works. But I like that. I'm working through that. Yeah. Are you, are you like um, ADHD? Is that because that's what you say you have? What is that when your brain just does too much? Yeah, I I haven't been officially diagnosed, but me and my best friend have diagnosed me. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I think I have ADHD. Bentley sure. diagnosed you? No. Oh <laughs> no, oh. not Bentley. My human best friend. But oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Cause you know white people love their dogs. You're like that's that's their best friend. I like, mean, he's my child. Does he sleep yeah. on the bed with you? Yeah. Does yeah. he? Do you guys like? Yeah, it's weird. Why is that weird? It's just in- intimate, right? It's I know what you t- mean. It's too intimate. It's like that's. It's your bed. Yeah, it's my bed, and you buy you buy a bed for him, right? Yeah, he has he has so a, he has a couple of beds. So why do you have to use yours? Um, I don't know. I guess I just like the company as well. I mean, he's a good cuddler. So. You, should, you should get a puppy and then try it. <laughs> Hell you should, yeah. You should, you should try it you and then should, bring you your should. puppy <laughs> to St. James. That would be it sure. might change your whole world. If that ever happens, that would be hilarious. That would be, that would be a great podcast. Do you not like dogs? I love dogs. It's just, <laughs> no, it's oh, just shut bad. up. What do you mean? Shut <laughs> up. I mean, I, <laughs> see, I love dogs. <laughs> no, he does. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, for sure. I, like, like, I used to pull up to like, your crib. Since he like met... Like my my puppy, yeah. like like before that. Wait 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 wait. The I one that know. you ran over or which? Oh damn! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are we cutting the? Who's this guy? Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. I, don't we know, I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, <laughs> that's not. No, this is an authentic podcast. We're bringing up. <laughs> oh my goodness! Damn. <laughs> but no, anyway, no, no. at ten when you to. first met, um, that would have been what's that dog's name Missy. That was Missy. Yeah. Um, Oh, cool as Rest dog. in peace. That was Rest cool in as peace, RP, Missy. RP, that was um, cool. Yeah, you like initially not a big dog person, but very quickly Missy loved you, and you yeah. You know, I have up a legendary her. picture with him on the couch. That's it. That's what I'm saying. Like I just think it's something that you get used to, and but like in the hood, we 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 we're accustomed to running from <laughs> <laughs> young boys. Can we attest to this? We we got our young boys in here. We got Dew in here. We got David in here producing. Could you guys test this? Did you run from dogs every yeah, time you saw them? And then the yeah. stories the to next day. day. Yeah. Well, the thing is, we don't know that the dogs are like trying to be oh, playful, man. like and actually happy. And and we're not talking about little fluffy white dogs. We're talking about German ran, shepherds. Ran. We're talking about you know, yeah, like Rennies. Um, yeah, yeah, Rockweilers. Well, we're some are racist. Though. Some dogs are racist. <laughs> no. no, they sense fear <laughs> and pigmentation. <laughs> I don't know about that. All those three me. things related. Like, what, what is <laughs> going on here? <laughs> <laughs> How many dogs did you guys have in Townsville? How was it over there? I have Bentley's my first dog, oh. like my dog. We had a family dog. <clears throat> that dog wasn't allowed inside. Yeah, so this is like Bentley's very spoiled but it makes sense now because yesterday when we were at the stadium or whenever it was you kind of ran away from bentley oh you, yeah, whoa, you did whoa, that's not, and that's i was not. like whoa <laughs> wait why are we putting fake narratives out here i didn't <laughs> run <laughs> I you were run. a bit startled i walked i walked walk purpose I was, yeah i was on my way somewhere you know i had, to, cur- I had to curve him i had to curve him really quick so wait why was he running because Bentley was next to him, he would he didn't realize Bentley was like right there, and he was right. like, oh, 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 oh. Right. It's not fear; it's called caution. Yeah, you you're know? trying to protect yourself. Instincts, instincts. Right, right, right. Yeah. So yeah, what was like, it like? Wait, wait, wait. Can I ask you a question? Are you a cat person or a dog person, or you just don't like animals? You like fish? I like fish. You like fish? Like yeah. eating them or like? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any pet goldfish? No, no, no. I like dogs. I like dogs over ca- over cats. Because cats, like, they shed too much. They really don't care about you. Is that true? <laughs> cats don't care. That, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They really just do their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They're not really a pet. They're sort of just a housemate. And don't they, like, when they leave at night, like, go do their own hunting? like And kill a whole bunch of native animals? Yeah, yeah for sure. They're not as nice as they look. No. 
And then just the, like Ted Bundy. And just, like, just, just like Ted Bundy. They're really, they're just. Oh my God, just he's not lying. Regular white people. <laughs> um, but the thing is, is like they just caught a, um, I can't remember what it was. They caught a cat and it was like eight to 10 kilos. Like, so it's this massive cat they, uh, they caught and had all these native animals in its stomach. I was reading it the other day. Yeah, so there's always wild um, cats, you know, feral cats. And I remember I was in Townsville and the army actually was hunting them. And this, um, they had a picture in the local newspaper and this army guy had a cat and he had the tail here and his paws were on the ground. So this is a feral cat in Townsville. So mm. you can imagine how long that is. That, this body with its arms out must have been five feet, close to six feet long. That's is that a regular thing in Townsville? Like you guys? <laughs> I'm gonna say yes. Townsville's <laughs> crazy. What is it like? What is it? I have what never seen one. I grew up in Townsville. Just yeah, they're feral. There, they're in but, the, yeah. but they're feral cats. Yeah. They're, they're not in the city. They're in the streets. <coughs> yeah, they're not in the streets. They're in the. You know. Did you guys? Uh, did you guys know of each other in Townsville? No, I was probably ten. I knew who Nadine was. <laughs> she was the next big thing. Everyone was talking about oh, for her. Real? So yeah. yeah. So did you really? So, yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, who's that? Oh, that's Nadine Payne. Blah blah. blah. I'm like, pff, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Should I make it? <laughs> <laughs> this is your chance. This is, oh this is your chance. Just a hater straight away. No, yeah. Damn. Like, nah. No, yeah. I, just, I just remember, like, because everyone obviously talks about, yeah. you know, who's gonna be the next mm. thing, and you know, oh, who's that? I think you're working out on court one with somebody. Mm. Oh, who's that? Oh, that's Nadine Payne. She's. How tall were you? How tall were you at ten? I was tall. Oh really? Yeah, I was tall. Yeah. I was really tall all throughout school. So tall. Always how was, how was that like? Yeah. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> yeah. It was sad. Like I, I was always in the back row for photos, which I really just had a thing about. Um, but I don't know. I think school was interesting for me because I was in a lot of different cliques. But I think because I played sport, that's what kind of connected me into so many different groups. I didn't really have like a group. Um, and you know, I don't. I don't think I got bullied, but people definitely made kind of comments about my height and everything like that. You definitely stood out, huh? Definitely stood out. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. Hard yeah. not to stand out. Yeah. Tall. Mm. Well, you were Tim. How were oh, you yeah. in uh, you know being um different? How was how was the school tall. <laughs> different? He meant tall. He meant tall. He said yeah. tall. <laughs> Yo, do you guys hear all this? Wait, <laughs> how, how did you go being friendly? Because <laughs> Ranko it's, wasn't friendly. He was different. No, I was popular though. You were. Yeah. Kind of, I don't know. But a hater. In my so head. <laughs> my hater. <laughs> I was popular in the haters. Everyone, <laughs> everyone loved me. No, Ranko. Popular <laughs> for hating. So, so how was, how did it go being different? <laughs> they called me, uh, I, really, I used to hate this name. They called me Gentle Giant Aww. after a while. You were a gentle giant. I can imagine. I became a gentle giant. <laughs> Before right, right, that, right. that's when I realized that, you know, conflict isn't the way to... Solve problems? Yes, isn't mm. the way to solve problems. After I learned that, I became a gentle giant, so... Why yeah. were you so gentle? And what did that mean? It's kind of... Uh, you know, you don't... you To disarm people. Yeah. If, if you... Like, if you're... Like, okay, big dudes have this. If you're like a big person, you're more intimidating. Yeah. So to to kind of disarm that you. Oh yeah, you, you do the yeah. opposite. Yeah, yeah you really be nice. nice. You be nicer first, you know, so that they don't have that perception like like already. So, but yeah. before that, what was your nickname? How many fights you been in? What's your record? What's your when, record, yeah, dog? When, when What's your UFC <laughs> record? <laughs> 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 Nah, what are you trying to do? You set my yeah, guy out. Yeah, 10 and 1, huh? 12, man. <laughs> 12 and 1, huh? <laughs> but it is weird being the only, like, how tall are you? Six foot? Or 10 or what? I'm like, look, I think technically I'm 6'3", but I say I'm 6'2". Yeah. Why? Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. I think with shoes on, which you wear shoes a lot, I'm 6'3". Four. Um, yeah. <laughs> four. <laughs> six four. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm 6'4". Four for real. Easy. Really? Easy. Yeah. Damn. Well, I guess six, six four. Without yeah. shoes. Six three without shoes. Sheesh. Yeah, that's a tall Why girl. is that sheesh? <laughs> and she just sh finished high school. Any colleges out there? <laughs> contact <laughs> us. So then she just finished high school. Any any colleges out there? Contact us. We'll send you the account. <laughs> Only 17. <laughs> Tim's 22. Um, so, okay, cool. <laughs> I feel like, are we interviewing Nadine today? Uh, yeah, we're, having a, we're having a conversation about, you know, uh, her book. Yes. Book has written a book. I think that um, Kenzie and her curls was that because of the bullying. 
Um, <laughs> wow. No, I actually, like I actually never got bullied for my hair because I always straightened it. So I straightened my hair every day. She was insecure? You were insecure? Yeah, about my hair. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you about insecure. <laughs> <laughs> but when was that first switch? What? It had to be a, like a, a moment that um, made you insecure about it. I think in Townsville, like the temperature is really different. So one day I did, I wore my hair like naturally and it just kind of went. And then I was like, oh my God, I don't look like everyone else. This isn't normal. So then I, yeah, started straightening it and just felt way more comfortable, way more like I just fit it in. Do you know what I mean? I, that was my, in, in my head, I was like, oh, okay, well, you're fitting in now. But. I was never fitting in in the first place. Mm. So, but That's the best feeling though when you realize you don't fit in mm. and then you fit in. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't think you realize you know that until way later. Yeah, absolutely. When was your, when was your fit in moment? When you realize you ain't going to fit in but then you fit in. I've never fit in. Unfortunately, Talk I, to I, me I, then. I've never fit in. You so, never fit in. You know, it was, uh, that's been my life. So it's not a, I had to learn how to not fit in. Exactly. Mm. But when did I feel like I didn't care about people fitting yeah, in? Yeah. Question. What's your earliest memory of not fitting in? It's gonna be like six years old, huh? It's first oh, day of yeah, school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> first day of school. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, first day of school. Yeah, yeah, because you know it's kind of sugar. It's the nineteen hundreds. So they didn't have like nineteen hundreds. So you know. No one fit in. No one fit in. Nineteen seventy six. School was different back then, though. Yeah. You know. They used to actually whip you guys and stuff. Right? They used to, yeah, we used to have canes and uh, paddles and leather straps. And yeah, it was, uh, it was a different world. You're lucky. I think like at that Talk age. Talk to the viewers, not you guys. <laughs> <laughs> at, uh, at that age. Yeah, that's weird. That's really tough. I, n- I know I've had that similar experience. Because like, at that age, when, you're, when you feel different, you actually can't, like, you can't get it out of your mind every day. Yeah. You know. I mean, you don't have the tools to get out of your mind at that age. Like, if you're 10, 11, 12, like, unless you're going to therapy at that age, like, I think it would be really hard for kids to actually get out of their own head. Yeah. So how it's did you deal with it? Yeah, I was going to say, it's a good conversation. Yeah. Like how, did, how did you deal with it? Well, I didn't have this epiphany at 12. Like, I struggled with my hair for so long, which ended up being meaning so many different things for me in life. But... I think, honestly, truly, when I stopped worrying about it, about fitting in and being different, I would have been, I think, 25. Yeah. Like, really, truly happy with myself and where I'm at, 25, 26. Yeah. So, it's been a long kind of journey trying to figure everything out. And, yeah, now, obviously, I'm in a really good space and very happy, but it's totally not an overnight thing. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Tim? Um, what about me? How did how did you deal with it? <laughs> Knowing that you're different and don't fit in. In any way, like it doesn't have to be for any, you know, specific reason. Like mm. I think of uh, like your attitudes, the way you approach the world, the way you think, you know, that's different anyway. So how did how did you deal with not being regular? I think uh at first I dealt with it with anger. Yeah. Cuz it started coming when I got to Australia, you know, not knowing the language, um, not knowing how to deal with those emotions, mm. being in a new place, trying to figure it out. And, yeah, the easiest way was to deal with it with anger and with with violence. Not like, yeah, even at, even at that young age, it was like, that's how you deal with it. Um, mm. Now, how I got over it, I think... Uh, Still haven't, huh? I was, was going to say. Oh, no, so no, 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 no. When I got over it, I got like, over like it. Like last week. Like, like two weeks ago. Yeah, like when yesterday. I dealt with this two weeks ago, yesterday. I realized that anger was not my solution. No, I like now I lean into being different. Yeah. Like yeah. Th- th- it's, it becomes like empowering. Because mm. like there's only one you and no one else could do you better than you do. With Facts. Like sir, like when you really realize that, it's like a, it's like a superpower. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. What about you? 
Kieran's <laughs> asking everyone to just yeah, no, come back I'll to talk, you. Okay. I'll go back to me. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk the whole time. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, then I'll start a story. But yeah, yeah, we remember last time we started a story. I want to give you guys all a chance. No, Rango. No, <laughs> no, no, I want to hear a story. Yeah, yeah, I, I, but I want to hear yours too. I want to hear yours. I think mine's similar to Nadine. I think 25 was the time where I was like, that's when I, I was like 90% I never gave a fuck. And then 25 was 100. But yeah, same thing. Like there's no tools until you... Hit, I don't know. Hit a certain age, and all of a sudden you're just like, yeah, I don't, I don't know why, I don't know why I care. I, I think it's a maturity young. thing. I think 25, 25 is, really is young. young. Oh, figure really? That out. Oh, th- yeah. yeah. Really? People never figure it out. Yeah. Well, yeah, but we're we're not regular people. Oh, I agree. When did mm. you figure it out? That's yeah. why I want to know about yours. Because I asked you because yours, like you said, six years old. When was so, yours? Again, like I had to think about it, but I process it as being special. So I always felt that um, I was special, that I was different. So, like, the ho- my whole life. So the whole processing was, was that I was special, I was different. And um, I guess that came from, you know, because I couldn't have sugar, so my parents felt bad about the condition I had. And so, you know, they treated me special, and I took that on board, and that has its own challenges. Like, Yes, because if you got treated special, yep. that could have been negative, though. Like, they put, you, but you, you, you saw it as positive? Like, yeah, I'm special? Yeah, so I think... Um, I was special, I was different, you know, I couldn't have sugar, but when people ask, why couldn't you have sugar, oh, can you have this lollies, they say, oh, no, no, I can't have it, I can't have sugar, explain the whole thing, everyone feels sorry for you, but in my head, like, that makes me special, like this, so mm. it was really, it was really funny, and then, um, I like that, he flipped it on them, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I flipped it on myself to survive, yeah, which is yeah. really funny, that's what my brain did, and mm. then, um, I remember this conversation, uh, it must have been seven or eight, and um, we're at the doctor, my mum swears it didn't happen, but I remember it clear as day. And uh, the doctor's like, oh, I had to see his liver function test. Like, oh, you have a fatty liver and you've got scarring. And I don't know if, you know, you'll live past 12. And I remember at six going, all right, then. I've got a... Six years left. God yeah, damn. Exactly. I was like, I was like well, I'm going <laughs> to, like, again, how the hell did I think this? I was literally like, all right, well, I'm going to make sure everyone is happy. Everyone has a good life. I'm going to make other people happy at six. And so that was... Holy mackerel. So from that point onwards, I just like... Turned to Realized that my life was... (laughs) Yeah, but I realized my life was... We were done. So I may as well do everything I can to make people feel comfortable and happy. And So when did you... I lived like that for a long time. Right, right. Which is messed up. Yeah. Like I don't... It's like very caregiver. I don't... Yeah, I don't really like that. Renko is fascinated because he doesn't know what this... (laughs) What (laughs) any of this is. Like he's being nice to people. really empathetic. Tell me more about empathy. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you realize you weren't going to die? Oh, I just never died. Like oh, I figured I was going to die. I remember turning 12 and not dying and then, you know, getting older and going, oh, this is cool. And then sort of feeling like I was living on borrowed time. And 2012 all over again, man. You guys remember 2012? Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, the movie. Yeah, we made it. <laughs> you guys were all there. <laughs> we were all here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Went and saw the movie. But you, Renko, you didn't answer it. Oh, what, what was the question? Well, you didn't answer what it was. We all explained kind of what it was that. that no, nah, yeah, like, I mean, I don't know. Twenty five. <laughs> I can't remember. I just remember being twenty five and being like, I don't care. But, uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Just clicked. Everything I clicked. Yeah, I don't know. It just it was just weird. And I think that happens too. It just clicks, and you're kind of like, all right. Mm. Yeah, I, I think, think I was, I was similar to you guys though. I embraced not not fitting in at so, like like early on, like high school. Didn't care. So at some point, you get fatigued. I think trying to fit in. Right. Like, I think that's a big thing. Like, the fatigue, I don't know how you guys felt, but yeah. at some point you get tired of just trying to fit in, trying to get people, you know, to get people's approval, and then you're like, you know what, I just don't care anymore. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 no go I was ahead. just going to say, it's, just, it's really performative, and we don't understand that we're being performative, I think, mm-hmm. as well. What do you mean by performative? You know what I mean by performative. That's a big word. I don't no. know. If, uh, <laughs> people, like you mean performing for other people? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. and that's what. Um, again, that's what I was doing. Mm. I was special, mm. and therefore I had to perform so that people thought I was special. So obviously, I just took really yeah. good mentors like Jesus and like Mother Teresa and people like that, and I, I put on a show. Mm. So sacrifice who I really was to <laughs> put on a show. Bro, you messed me up the other day. I forgot who I was. T- it was like the last week. <laughs> What I remember I when I was coming to you about like uh, how when you give opportunities and sometimes people don't take advantage of them or whatever. Yep. I was telling you about that frustration. And you were like, yeah. And I don't even know if it was that that we were speaking about, but you were like, yeah, I wonder what Jesus would do. <laughs> like, 
Who cares what Jesus would have did? Hold on, hold on, bro. It's a good question. Great like, question. I wonder what Jesus would do. It's a great do. question. Be like, yeah, like Jesus would still give love and, 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 and give those services. Do you find yourself asking that question a lot? Like every day? You know what? Well, that's what Jesus I wonder. Yeah. No, nah, well, I mean, I think, um, yes. <laughs> yes, to start with. Because, yeah. like, if you look at, I guess, you know, I found my spirituality sitting in front of my high school church for an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon, and just, you know, praying and trying to work out what life was. So it's kind of like just that self-exploration, meditation, whatever you want to call it. Um, but then what I realized from all of that was that unconditional love or love just flows through everything. It's like, you know, I mean, it's, it's in media now, but, you know, if you understand that and everything's unconditional and you just think to yourself what's best for this person, you know, in this moment, and how do I, you know, provide that space and that energy? And if everyone did that, then the world's a totally different place. So you take away power, control, money. So I don't ask what did Jesus do, but I know what love, if you focus on love, then the answer's obvious. Yeah. So we're talking about providing people with opportunities, you're trying to help them, and they don't take those opportunities, and you feel disappointed, or you feel frustrated, or, you know, we've been talking about this, like, here's the opportunity you wanted, right. there it is, and they don't take it, and you get frustrated. But then... You can either let that eat you up and say, I'm not going to provide any opportunities, or you're just like, well, you know, I did what I could do. And that's all I've got control over. Right. And then they have to... Um, and do you keep them. providing those opportunities? That's like the if goal? If I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Like without, without, you know, keeping a grudge or keeping consequence in mind, it's just like, well, you know, maybe they're ready when they're ready. Right. And, and too often, people, when they do become ready, you know, the opportunity's not there. Yeah. Whereas if you can, if it's still there yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're ready, then you know, amazing things happen. Thanks. So yeah. that's kind of, I mean, Jesus is a, I guess, a, a, a book you can go oh. to. He's a, he is a carpenter, but it's a book. <laughs> it's you know, the Bible. It's his practices, his teachings. But realistically, it's that philosophy of love, which is in all religions. So we got to read the Bible. Uh, yeah, like at a, least once, man. At least one time. Have you read the Bible, Dean? At least once, man. <laughs> yeah. I have to read that at least once. Well, any philosophy. It doesn't have to be the Bible. Yeah, true. She anything. was like, no, nah, I'll just write my own book. <laughs> I'll just Absolutely. do my own thing. <laughs> yeah. Just focus on love and the answers will be the same. When did you decide to actually write this? Um, I think it was in 2020. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was walking the hill in Townsville and um, I was with one of my really... It's like a castle... It's called Castle Hill. It's like um, just a track okay. you can yeah work out on. Or like a hiking track? What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you can walk on like the goat track is what it's called. So it's just kind of a path up the side of the hill and or you can just walk on the road. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's a good workout. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do running up there. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty... Post on Instagram. <laughs> Tam used to get in on that. <laughs> oh, no, I've been there. It's that massive. Yeah, it's and really a look at it at yeah. the end. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Been a Towser? Come on, man. I've been <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but I was, I was walking with one of my really good friends and I had an interaction that morning with a family at a coffee shop and um, I was like, this is really something that I think I want to do. Um, the interaction was um, a mother and three kids mm -hmm. um, and... They, like Bentley's a great conversation starter so they were talking to me about Bentley and all of the kids had curly hair um whenever I see kids with curly hair I always give them a compliment and I tell them that I really like their hair um it's just something that I do now because I want them to understand that their hair is really beautiful um and yeah I was talking to the mum and um I asked her how like the kids like their hair and she said oh they don't like it at all um, she said the daughter came back from school and said, I want to have white skin and blonde hair. Mm. And I was like really taken back by that comment. And um, she had curly hair herself and I was like, oh, do you like your hair? She said, I love it now, um, but I hadn't always loved it. And um, I just was really moved by that one interaction. Um, I think I could really, yeah, just relate with them not liking their hair and um, feeling different. Um, so yeah, I've it was it was literally that day I started my little like vision board and everything and yeah. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. What was the first step? You yeah, it was like a moon board of just every type of like hair that I could find yeah. with like curl types. There's all different curl types and stuff. So yeah, I just did that. Um, and then from there, I interviewed a lot of people that I knew who had curly hair, asked them their experience um, growing up 
if they like their hair now um, and just kind of questions like that just to give me some more context because I c- couldn't base the book base the book just off my experience everyone has different experiences so yeah that was my next step we need to um <laughs> who's Nuna <laughs> we need to get at Nuna, whoever gave you the, the idea of, of a Sudanese girl named Nuna. Nuna. Young boys, do y'all know any Sudanese <laughs> girls named Nuna? She led you wrong. I want I wanted to do this. <laughs> I wanted to do this whole no, thing to tell her she led you astray. It was two dudes. Two d- I asked two dudes. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know, maybe. Yeah, they. Yeah, they. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah. But what? That's okay. They knew someone named Nuna once. They once, knew someone named yeah. Nuna. They did both. you write the book yourself? Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. How long did that take you? Um, I think in total it took me about seven months. I had like 10 drafts. I was like, you know, it was, I was so out of my comfort zone with the whole thing. I had no idea what I was doing. So I wanted to try and reach out to as many people as I could, get their opinion on it, um, and then send it to an editor and did all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it took me a while because I – had I had no idea where I wanted to start. Like I really knew what message I want to wanted to put out, but I was like, ah, you haven't written since year twelve English. So at one point through it, did you ever be like, nah, F like I'm, I'm Yeah, not doing I was this. I this was sucks. like I did I just didn't know. And then I was really battling with myself because I wanted everyone to feel represented in the book. Yeah. And I knew that that probably wasn't gonna be possible in the end, but I really tried so hard to make it so diverse that someone even if they didn't have curly hair that they could at least like relate to it in some context that's what that's my favorite part about the book because i told you i got it for my niece yeah and yeah she, i don't know if she i don't know if you realize mm. or even she realized or i realized how important it was to have like it wasn't just nuna there was, yeah. there was, all, there was like eight seven or eight characters mm. and uh yeah, it was just cool to to see my nephew, like my my niece, sorry, feel like represented, you know, and 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 it just didn't feel foreign to her. Yeah. Um, and that's why I thought it's just such a dope thing. Yeah. And we had to come speak about it because yeah. I mean, that's I think yeah, it's so way cool. more important than than you really reckon. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it's dope. I mean, that's really special to, like, hear that that's how she felt because that's exactly what I wanted. Like, I didn't go into this wanting to make a lot of money from it. I literally just wanted kids to see themselves and know that, like, they are special and they don't need to change. You put it out yourself. Yeah, I self-published the whole thing. Yeah. Did you – Did was that because they denied you at first? Like, did you go to any publishers and be like, hey, this is mine? Or did you just straight away be like, I'm doing this? I didn't go to any publishers at all. Um, I think the reason why I didn't was I did, like, I'm a person who does a lot of research. So before this podcast, I wanted, like, information so then I could research. Yeah, you're annoying the hell out of me. (laughs) Yo, what are we going to talk about? Can I have a little list? I'm like, yo, chill. (laughs) So, like, before (laughs) I do everything, whether I buy something or whatever, I do so much research on it to know, like, just everything. I just want to be best prepared um, how does that usually ha- like work out for you hey how does that usually work out for you <laughs> look with like logical things quite great yeah. i'm trying not to do that with like humans right. like i'm just trying to really be present with humans and i think i'm doing a good job with that in right, my right, life right. but like with my business or like something like this i think it's extremely helpful yeah cool. yeah um but i forgot what i was talking about and yeah. it happens. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it happens. But uh, no, yeah. you're talking about her, the research behind it. Oh. Yeah, what were you saying about like you like googling a lot? Oh yeah, because I self-published. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't want to go to a publisher, and then because I again I wasn't trying to make a lot of money from it, um, and I really wanted why? My s- why? 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 Well, no, I mean I don't know. I just it's your work. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know. I think I, I think I've had a very priv- privileged life growing up, um, and you know what? I'm trying to give back some like way. We all did. So <laughs> that's that's honestly like me thinking about it. I I didn't think about that until that moment, and I was like, okay, really think about that, Nadine. Why did you do that? And that's probably why I've had a privileged life, and I'm trying to give back somehow because that was out of my control. Why do we always? This is a tangent, but why do we always feel weird about getting paid for our services? Like I don't know. Ask Kieran. He doesn't take any money. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I know Kieran knows what I'm talking about. Like, I don't know, because I think that it changes your motivation. 
you know, on some level it changes your motivation as to why you're doing things. And when you do things for a passion or for a purpose or has meaning, so you want to make a difference, you want to give back, that's a much more authentic thing that you're doing. Um, whereas, and none of us are that business mind. If you're pure business, you're just trying mm-hmm. to make money, then you're just trying to produce stuff. And so why not delegate that? Could you just delegate that responsibility yeah, to absolutely. someone else so you don't I mean, have to If we were to smarter, that. we would do that. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> you know, maybe in the future we'll delegate, we'll, you know, hire yeah. some people from overseas or whatever that, you know, to do those things. But it's difficult. It's difficult to keep that motivation, that passion, which makes the quality of what you're doing um, totally different than if you're just business and you're punching out for as cheap, as fast as possible yeah. to get to get um, turnover. Um, you know, and I think, you know, the book is... Um, really indicative of someone who has a passion and has a vision. Yeah. You know, and if we said, all right, Nadine, excellent book. We need 10 more in three months. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then That's a whole different thing. You know, yeah. How do I get them out? I'm under pressure. I've got this. What, what do I want to tell the world? Yeah. It's a different quality. So Yeah, now you're not doing it for the love. You just. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that's what, um, you know, we see all the time. And that's why I think that what we're doing here is different. This is, it is how it is. It's not, you know, overly produced and you know, cut up and, you know, you're not trying to make millions of dollars yet, so. You say yet. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. No, we're just trying to put the information out there. Cause yeah, just. Like, yeah, like, I, th- yeah, I think the book is dope and it's dope that you did it. Yeah. And it yeah. seems people these Thank stories, you. I think. Like, and I think that's what's cool. Like, mm. getting Nadine on and telling her story, okay, that's awesome. And then getting it out there for a wider audience, that's amazing. And then, you know, building from there. Well, because you, you're not. Before it, you weren't. You're not an author. Mm-mm. So you've never written a book. People, did you tell? Did you get any pushback from like telling people? Did you tell anyone? Um, yeah, I told a couple of people. Um, my parents actually were really interesting when I told them that I wanted to do it. My dad's a businessman, and his first question was, "How much money are you going to make from it?" And I was like, "I actually don't know. Yeah. I might not make any. I might not break even." Um, and once he saw the physical copy, he just got it and he was like, oh, this is a really cool book. Um, and I was going to say dope, but my dad didn't say dope. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe way back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 That was right my old life, yeah, not anymore. None of this current world. <laughs> a bunch of people that were really supportive. But yeah. It didn't matter in the end of the day because I wanted to do it yeah. and I was going to do it. That's yeah. Cool. That's cool, Les. Well, this is the part of the show where we do our um, men versus women relationship talk. <laughs> do all do all men cheat? <laughs> do, do <laughs> this is a Tim. This is a Tim just doing something. Fuck? Is that, is that <laughs> surprise? Is that, <laughs> is that really her friend at work? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What do we think about that? Dean was flabbergasted. Dean was like, hey, yo, I didn't, oh, come, here. I didn't come here for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Barry White, bro. He playing Barry White. I heard that. I heard that. You That's never cool. heard of Barry White? No, I never heard of Barry White. Uh, Ranko man, mentioned Barry White. I want to. Is this the announcer for like boxing? No, no bro. That's yeah, a different he's dude. He's a singer. We'll have to. I thought that was that famous uh, boxing announcer. Nah, nah, that guy's good too, though. He's before good, he's we good. go on, I'll, before we get into what you want to talk about. <laughs> oh, I'm just throwing I'll, it out there. If you want to pick it up, <laughs> if nah, you want to nah, nah, leave I'll, the break. I want to <laughs> know what Ranko has uh, created and given to the world. Because you're a creative guy. Ooh. What, <laughs> <laughs> what is he talking about, you make, you make stuff all the time. I don't make stuff. I customize stuff. It's different. Yeah, tell us about it. Listen, bro, I find furniture and I flip it. That's just how it is, you know? Oh, I buy it, sick. I sand it, I make it look pretty, and I just sell it. And you like doing it? I like doing it. So, you that's know, cool. that, that's what we're talking about the same thing. Like, it's a totally so different thing. So why don't thing. you market it out? Market it. Well, I'm trying. Market I'm trying to build it. This, this is my issue I have with you so all So what Renko time. does is he buys, gets old furniture. Yeah. And then does it up so it looks amazing. It's wooden, old wooden furniture, yeah. And then and then sells it. Yeah. You can follow me on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let, no, I'm trying to Like, let him know, like. Yeah, no, for real. And I'm trying to build it through Instagram. Like, trying okay. to get a bigger following. And I'm trying to maybe start selling my own paint and, uh, like, products to help other people do the same stuff and see get, how it goes. Um, you should do, do, like, Instagram instructional videos. Yeah, and yeah. YouTube I'm, I'm videos. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. That's what I mean. Like, you have a passion. And then, 
you know, how do you get it out there? How do you? That's the hard part. I and mean, me and Buell have these conversations all the time, but it's all just really time, hard. Like it's really hard to um all the time. It's not really hard. It's, it's, it's not hard at all. It's not hard at all. You get I'm Buell to come to your house. He videos you. <laughs> right? You don't swear. He makes a video. He puts it online. You know what I mean? Like make like, sure I'll I'll put put make sure clips first. <laughs> How hard is it? You have a link. Like make sure our clothes are on. All that type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, make it all you, peaceful. You, you got to wear, you, you where, wear where appropriate was, outfit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so it's not like a normal visit. Like this, is like a unless if I really want to blow up, then yeah. we start adding some without a shirt on. You do without a shirt. Add on. some you, women. You work out. Where, you know what I'm saying? No, it doesn't be women. This, you just be you. Going? Nah, bro. <laughs> it's gonna be mean? some women. There's, no. a, there's a whole market. <laughs> for, be me, Drew. There's a whole market for you doing furniture and sanding without your shirt on. I guarantee that is it. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> it's not lying. <laughs> I have to be on steroids first. I have to like, nah, no, nah, you're you a you dude. Day. I see. You work out every nah, day. Nah, listen. No, we're talking day. about you. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you like, keep talking oh, about me. Oh, oh, nah, nah, nah. I saw some dude on TikTok. He just cuts trees. Yeah. He gets a log, right? And just cuts the. Yeah, he's jacked. He has tattoos. And he just cuts trees. You need yes. tattoos. And, and then he gets jacked. More jacked. What does jacked mean? Jacked? To you. Like big. Like, you know, he's, he's bigger than all of us. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, he just cuts trees and, and people. Same thing. You just Same need thing. the right lighting, the right angles. Saying, you got a bro. videographer. There's a wooden, passion. there's a wooden t- table right here, right now. We could get a crack in. Look at the light right there. Nah, not right now. Crazy, yeah. I don't want to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, That's I'm not like, bad though. I, I, I see what you're doing, but I'm, I'm not keen for that. Like, like this, <laughs> no. this is, this is, Renko does this on his own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's selling his own furniture. Body. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not nah, image. We call it, we image, say image. image. We don't I like say body. We say we're saying it's image, possible. and you know. But I've been finding everyone has the same issue. Like. Putting out the stuff that they do every day, that they love doing. They're passionate and and there's some hold. Like, I know a lot of people who want to do it and want to show it more yeah. online, but something is holding them back. Well, so you were talking about that guy with music. Like, you know, that you heard that the kid making amazing oh, music. This kid, his name is Mueller Made. Like, this kid is incredible. Absol- like, absolutely incredible. And that was his thing. Like, yeah, I just. He's just not on top of it. And and there's just some hold with putting out his music, like showing it more, showing what he's doing. You're in the studio. He makes beats too. Like, I'm like, well, if you show it more, that'll be an advertisement for the music or for whatever whatever else you have going on. But, but and you really do this. Like, you're really talented. Yeah, but not only that, like, it's, it, you, again, what you're doing, you don't know who's going to help. You don't know who's going to connect with. You don't yeah. know who you're going to inspire. Mm-hmm. Unless you actually put it out there and people see the passion. Because they see the passion, they see the love, they see what you've invested, yeah. and that's what grows. If it's just commercial, it's commercial. But when people actually produce and they go, oh, damn, like if they can do it, yeah. and with that passion, I've got that passion, I can produce it. And now you're creating a whole community of people who are passionate, and about the world's a better do. place. Like know? that's been the whole thing about this podcast. Like, yo, yeah, let's I, do it. I was it. gonna say the same thing. I the called you guys right away, like, oh, sh- it's up. Like, holy, and it was this easy. It it's like, easy, but it's, you but a block. don't do it. There's a block, like he said. There's a block because they don't. I don't think. I think they, when you do it for yourself, yeah. right? You, you're not doing it for the marketing or the business. But if you just look at it slightly differently, and you just go, okay, I'm actually providing inspiration. Yeah. Like you don't. I'm trying to help other people. Like I'm doing it for myself anyway. Like like that's it. Like I know I'm doing it for me, but you never know who you're going to connect with or who you're going to inspire at what level. Mm. And and I think that. Anything you're passionate about, that's the transfer. It's not lying. It's crazy, bro. <laughs> I feel the same way as him, though. The more stuff you do for yourself, and with like, like, like with no incentive for anything else, the yeah. better the world is just in general. Like all of a sudden, your life's better. Yeah. The energy's different. People yeah. get inspired. They they lift up. Yep. Like, you, you, like, you can connect now, and like it's just way better. Yeah. I know you agree. I know you agree, too. I definitely agree with there that. There we go. Yeah. Have you got any, like, cool messages or, like, thank you stories from... Uh, like unexpected from the book from the book yeah yeah three kids dressed up as my character for book week this uh-huh. year and my book had been out for a month i think that's dope and did they have curly hair already or did yeah they, they did have curly hair <laughs> one kid had a wig so she put a wig on um but three kids and i did not know who the kids were i had no connection to them wait they showed up to your house no they <laughs> sent me photos <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> on my page <laughs> like, <what? laughs> <laughs> no one knows where I live. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. That creepy. That was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was really cool. <clears throat> that was very cool, actually. I think that that moment, I was like, "Oh wow, <clears throat> I can like really touch some people with this thing." Because I've been very blasé about it. Like, I've been very chill about the whole thing. 
until people kind of be like, oh, you've written a children's book, you're an author. Like, yeah. And I have always been Nadine Payne, the basketball player. So it's... Play basketball? Yeah. 6'4". <laughs> you guys knew that? <laughs> how, how, where did you play basketball? Yeah. yeah. Um... But move, yeah. move along. No, because well, no, that whole thing is a total another topic about like you're having your own identity with attached to basketball and like growing to understand that you are Nadine Payne. Like you don't <clears throat> need to be anyone, anyone else than N- Nadine Payne. Yeah. Like it's, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. About. It's a lot. Like playing basketball for s- so many years. Um, and just always is being it hard to reinvent yourself? Mm-hmm. Like obviously, Kenzie and her curls is a is an amazing segue to get out of that to recreate mm-hmm. a different identity. Um, was it hard to to I guess you know recreate yourself and then realize that something you've invested in for I don't know ten fifteen years? Whoa, I can actually be somebody else. Um, Some people call it midlife crisis. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I'm just checking. You know. I'm like no, I Kenzie had nothing to do with it actually. Okay. Yeah, that was a lot of therapy. Yeah. Um, that was therapy for sure. Um, and that really only happened like in 2021. Yep. I really took my worth f- away from basketball. How long were you doing therapy before that? Um, I was doing therapy on and off, um, for 2018 to 2021. Yeah. How cool is therapy? Therapy is so sick. I would love everyone to do therapy. I agree. Yeah, yeah. such a bad what, stigma around it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like Kieran. It should be free too, to it, be honest. It should be free. Yeah. Um, Bjor's like hell, nah. <laughs> <laughs> we do therapy all the time, Bjor. That, that, that's, that's all we do. Yeah, that's all we <laughs> do. <laughs> just don't go. Yeah, we don't just train a lot at St. James. Doesn't count. Talk, okay. There's it's a really lot just of therapy talking. going on. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but how cool is that though? Like that was the first thing I noticed when I came into St. James. Like all of you guys have real good energy <laughs> and Kieran has obviously put all these people around these kids for a reason and I really wanted to be a part of all of that. But I think it's really cool that you guys have this relationship with him and he's able to talk to you guys, mentor, mentor you guys, and he's doing it to the young kids, and the young kids don't even realize it's happening, which is so amazing yeah. um, for them. But yeah, the whole stigma about mental health and men's mental health, like I am so for, I'm here for all the conversations about emotions with men. You have emotions, Renko? I have a lot of emotions, but I, <laughs> yeah. I just block them out, man. That's the best way to deal with that shit. Therapy, that's therapy, therapy right there. That's, oh, that's what you told me, bro. Hey, just block <laughs> that shit out. Man, that shit doesn't and, exist. And, you don't and, see and, it. And look, and look how happy you are. <laughs> happy as <laughs> yeah. I think. I think what's cool is that um, you know, like the stigma around it. If you can go, if you can provide relevance and context to it, like mm. literally. These conversations should just be day to day conversations. And yeah. You don't feel yeah. trapped by your emotions. You don't feel trapped by, you know, your fear or your stigma. You can just say, "Hey, look, like this, one I'm going through. What do you think?" You know yeah. what I mean? And we do that a lot. Where you just say, "Like this happened," or maybe you had a bad day and you come in and you do basketball and you're welcome to shoot around. Hey, I don't want to train. I just want to shoot on the sideline. Yeah, go for it, man. Like mm. we're here if you need us, or just use it. You know, use it as a place. I like how you said, uh, don't be trapped by your emotions. Mm. I feel like a lot of people who don't do a therapy or don't have these conversations regularly get trapped by their emotions and it's really hard to escape that pattern. And wh- where's the space? You exactly. know what I mean? Like you yeah. feel trapped. Can I share that information? I don't yeah. want to be judged. I don't want to do this. Like what do people think a certain way? Whereas, I mean, and again, I'm, I'm um, a little bit sarcastic sometimes, you know what I mean? Sometimes. A bit. <laughs> All right, buddy, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I'm sarcastic, but usually it's because I've already worked out what's going on and how do I open up that box? And the only right. way to open it up right. is to actually, like, you know, use laughter or sarcasm, which cuts through the stigma of it automatically, but it's also, hey, like, we can, I can deal with this anytime you want, but I'm letting you know I know. Yep. And, um, yeah. and, and, and we're here for you. And after months, people are like, yeah, all right, like I get it. And you know, it's like they can talk to like all of us or any of us at any different time. And I think that support is a space that doesn't exist. Yeah. You know, we're not, we're not basketball is not what we do. Like, you know, what we do is, is develop a community where people can like learn life skills and learn about themselves. And when they learn those things, then those go out in the community. And I think that's the coolest thing. Like we're at a point now where people understand or, or have lessons or, or, you know, they've had that opportunity and they can hopefully impart that into, you know, 
their friends, their relatives, like their own lives, like eventually their children. Yeah. You know, um, just waiting for a temp attempt to get back from Africa and then we can start the next <laughs> 16 <step>. wives. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I mean, that's, that's the coolest thing, I guess, that I find is that we, um, you know. I think so too. Yeah, impacting a lot of people's lives yeah. and they don't even know it, mm. even know it. Mm. My favorite thing is when someone new comes in and <laughs> we see their frustration and we're like, oh, yeah. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Kieran sucks. What the fuck? I just want to be coached. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just tell me what to do. I mean, on the coaches' on the side. coaches too, both. Like both. Nadine uh, yeah. came yelling like like mad woman the other day. Yeah. I'm joking. Yeah, you were frustrated. You, were frustrated. Yeah, you actually got frustrated. You actually, it wasn't and, and it was visible. And it, was, it, 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 was, it was cool to see. Yeah. It is cool. It's cool. And then we worked through those issues too. Mm. You know what I mean? Like the number of times that, you know, the coaches are frustrated. Mm. Like, you know, why don't they just, we did this perfectly yesterday. Why can't they do it today? You know, and that, that's a reflection on ourselves. You know, like why do we expect, you know, um, you know, young kids, if they've done something once, why do we expect them to be repeating the next day? And how do we approach that? You know, yeah. and and it's fair enough to be frustrated, but then what do we do? It's the same it? as emotions, though, right? You can be happy one day. Why 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 can't I be happy the next day? Right? That's how people think. I'm having a bad day. Exactly. And how do I process that? And that's all. And then there's nothing wrong with having a bad day. Yeah, and we're not, yeah. and we don't kick people out. We don't go, okay, if you're not doing this, you know, you're out. It's like, well, Thanks. how are you going to work with that? You know, you're obviously having a bad day. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. You're going to shoot on the sideline. Do you want to? You know what I mean? Um, or I'll, you know, go up to the coach say, oh, are you, you all right? <laughs> Had a bad day. All right, cool. I feel like uh, at, at that age, like we grew up, like you said, our identity is basketball. Yeah. But like we took it very serious. Like it, it can really weigh on you, like having a bad game. Yo, yeah, all I'm the not, expectations. All the expectations. You have a good game. All right, cool. You have a bad game. You don't feel like um, people love you as much anymore or you have a bad practice and it messes up your whole week so like that moment that you're talking about that happened to me in the pandemic mm. when the pandemic started i loved it like just got to pause for a little bit and like i was i was having fun in the house like watching youtube learning new things picked up a book and this and like yeah it was it was a it was like a space to kind of be like okay what else do I like? Mm. Not just basketball. Besides basketball, what else do I like? Yeah. Like, did the pandemic help you with that? Oh. Well, the pan in the pandemic, we were between seasons. So I had just signed. Then I was still playing WNBL. Um, so the pandemic was very different for me. I was working out yeah. and trying to stay on track. I was by myself with Bentley, actually, in Melbourne. Um, so, that yeah, the pandemic was interesting. But Did you love basketball growing up? <sighs> That's a big sigh. Uh, she said no without saying <laughs> no. no. If it's not a yes, it's a no. <laughs> yeah. like, that's, it. that's how we roll. I don't know. I like actually do not know. Um, that's something that I'm been that's trying cool. to figure uh, out. Were you just really good at it? So you just I kept was, doing it. I was good. Oh. Yeah, I was good. And um, was someone forcing you to do it? No, I was doing. Like I did a lot of sports. I did athletics and swimming. Um. And I did a little tennis, just saying. Um. <laughs> we okay. We're bringing up this tennis again. <laughs> we're going to start tennis. <laughs> Momon actually said uh, there's one like down the down the street from Boundary Street from, from let's school. Go, let's go get we it. should actually go and go yeah, play. Let's do it. We'll organize that. That'll be our staff That'll breaker. Be That'll special episode cool. too. We can right. record <laughs> Kieran not winning. <laughs> <laughs> I want to yeah. see that. Thank you. I'm a hater. I definitely anyway, want to see that. Tennis. <laughs> Sorry, go yeah. No, so I didn't really get forced. It just got to the stage where mum was like, you need to pick a sport because I can't drive you everywhere. Uh, how old were you when you <laughs> yeah. had to pick a sport and invest in basketball? Hey. How old were you when um, you had to pick a sport? I think I was 10 or 11. Yeah. Pretty young. Yeah. And, and then that was it? Basketball yeah. was your thing? Mm-hmm. Is that yeah. miserable? Um. Yeah, I didn't really have like a lot of, I guess, time away from basketball. Every week, w weekend was basketball. Every day after school was basketball. I was in like QAS, like all of the things that you were in. And then when I was 13, I was in the WNBL squad. So I was training with all of the WNBL at girls 13? at 13. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. 
she was better than you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, chill, chill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know if I've always, I I feel like I love basketball, but then when I hear other people talk about how much they love basketball, I'm like, yeah, man, that's not me. Like that's not, I'm not at that level. Probably because you hated the. So how'd you still beat basketball. everyone? Like, <sighs> Why'd you stick with it? Yeah, I mean, I good. liked playing. Like I liked playing. I liked. Um, Likes not love. Yeah, I liked playing. I, Did I you think love anything about it. Like love anything about it. You um, woke up and gone, ah, oh, this is it's amazing. I think when I was pro probably in my eighth year, I was getting paid pretty well and I was like, Wow, this is really cool to and people are paying to come and watch me play. Like yeah. that was probably yeah. The love. So you love the money? <laughs> no, no, love the, no, I love the appreciation. It's, all, it's always people, the money. He finally appreciated yeah. the level I'm at and the effort yeah, I put in. And I was like, "Oh wow, we're gonna put the, we're gonna no, put that." Um, that's really interesting. Yeah, it wasn't like I went to the AIS, had a scholarship there, didn't felt nothing, huh? Yeah, no, oh. I felt like I had to go and do it. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. it was something that I had to do. Do, do you love basketball? Yeah. What do you love about basketball? <laughs> I guess I never thought I like a lot of things I like the The creativity Yep Creativity mm. And then um, I like competing too Yeah I recently found out That I like competing Yeah Because I didn't know How to I don't know how to. How, I, I don't know how to word it I, I, I thought I was competing Until I realized I wasn't competing Yeah And then the competing Made it really more enjoyable I like the creativity I like the Problem solving if you're in a team that actually problem solves, it's fun. Mm. Yeah. So those are the things I like about it, you know. And mm. then I like applying like myself. I, pl- I like, yeah, I like applying myself, you know. Mm. But what do you feeling love? myself, man? What do you, what do you love? love? What do you about love about it? it? Love, love it. Love it. Feeling <laughs> yourself, like actually, actually yeah, investing love. yourself and like just being who you are. Yeah. Expressing yourself through basketball. Yeah. yeah I mean, nice. that's cool. Okay, what did you hate about basketball? Everything else. Everything. What's everything else? Everyone else. My yeah. my own brain, yeah. <laughs> my expectations. Everyone else's expectations, yeah. judgments. No understanding why. Just yeah. Everyone no one telling me why. So it was really really hard. Why what? Just why I wasn't good enough. Why I didn't. Why I couldn't be good enough. It was just weird. Mm. Didn't feel loved. Ooh. Yeah, he, Ooh. Didn't feel deep. loved. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Didn't yeah. feel accepted. Didn't yeah. feel like you were part yeah. of the the basketball yeah, world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what about you? What do you love about basketball? Man, man, man. I don't love basketball. That is, a, that is a great question. I think the, the competitiveness that comes with it, yeah. the wanting to be better, like you saying hating everyone else, like on the court you just, it just. It's fun. It's fun yeah, being a hater. I don't know. I don't know. On I the court, it, on the court it is. That's why like it's hard to, t- it's hard to still play and have that switch off. Like it's, it's, it's hard. So, yeah. What about you, Karen? I think I love anything about basketball. Really? Yep. Mm. I don't think anything. There's nothing I love about basketball. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, not specifically. What about other sports? Is there any other sport uh, you love? No, not really. I think I think I love myself. I love, you know, testing myself. I'm not going to be very good at something. Someone says you can't do something. Yeah. And then my, oh, I'll see if I'm pretty sure I can. And then, you know, that's a lot of hate and a lot of anger and sort of dedicated... 15 years, 20 years to it. <laughs> now you're teaching others to, <laughs> to hate. To it's fun to though. <laughs> it's fun being angry. Right? They don't know that. Yeah, no, nah, like, well, I mean, you know, like. But like, know. what's what's soccer? I never, bro, <laughs> soccer is like pure love for me. It's totally different. That's yeah. what I mean. Whole like, it's different totally love. Different. Yeah, like, and I don't know what it is. Like, when the ball's at your feet, I, you guys don't know what this is. You know, it's just a. Uh, you guys are connected. You used to be good know? at soccer, right? <laughs> I swear I really should have been in Manchester United right now. Yeah, maybe with the me coach and the grades. But no, yeah, no, it's, it was the system. No, it was the system. He told me when I was 14. It was like, the system. I should really be playing soccer. I was like, uh, okay, well, if you go to that, fine. If not, <laughs> let's do some basketball. Yeah, facts. Facts. That was like... I don't recall you being good. I got two World Cup championships <laughs> at St. James, dog. <laughs> that that I don't bullshit recall, ass I don't Europe you team. Oh, That's good. Matter. I hated you guys. We beat him. <laughs> yeah, it was so trash. Twice. That it was so trash. No, 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 I, I can't was remember so him. Why, I was why, why, why are you shooting down his dreams? That's how he remembers <laughs> life. He remembers <laughs> life. He's sitting like, you're like, nah, nah, that's not. Yeah, that's, like, pro. that's like somebody get on here, man. You were never good in under 18s. Yeah, yeah nice. when you played for Brisbane, you, you know, Division 2. I wasn't, though. Like, you know, obviously, and you got good, but, you know, 
just remember like you were. Yeah. Like just, just <laughs> remember it how it was, <laughs> even if it wasn't like that. Yeah, yeah. So for me, I think um, I like what I like is trying to uh, uh, prove everybody wrong. Is there anything much. new in your life that this is a question for all of us? Is there anything new in your life that you want to, I'm not going to say chase, but pursue or, or figure out just like basketball was for us? Like what's next? Yeah. Do you, do you have any inkling, any, every day. anything you want to put out there? <laughs> every, day every day, like what's that. yours? Yeah. What is I have it? to be in that mindset every day. Otherwise, I feel like um, but what I'm still curing this. It doesn't matter what it is. Okay. Every day. Yeah. It's got to be like that in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> you hear me, Dean? Every day. Every day I'm hustling. So like every day I got to do something. Otherwise, otherwise, it feels like I'm, it feels, it feels like I'm losing life. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as I get stuff accomplished, mm. like little bits. That's cool. I feel like by the end of the year, every year, it'll just add up, you know. A bit but better. If, yeah. yeah. What about you, Nadine? Yeah. Is there anything? What was the question again? <laughs> 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 yeah, sometimes I forget what it turns Anything to. you're... Working on at the moment, that you, with passion. Uh, yes. Myself. Yeah, myself. Mm. Mm. Yeah, can I touch yeah, on that? Something some, that's some really interesting with that, right? Mm. And, and is if you don't look at yourself, you don't know what you're looking at. Mm. So once you start looking at yourself instead of like blocking <laughs> it out, you know what I mean? Instead of blocking it out, like and as soon as you start looking, mm. instead of being scared of it. It's or scary, yeah. It's sure, scary to look at It's scary. But once yeah. you start doing it, it actually you become really passionate about mm. you and you're like, Damn, like, you know, like I can see all the good things, all the things I don't like, mm. and then what do I want to do about it? Is that your experience? Yeah. How you going with so. that? Yeah. Very much so. I think, yeah, it's, it's going. It's definitely going. I'm trying to figure it out, just trying to figure it out. Um, and I think, like, if for an example, like committing to the St. James thing was a big thing for me, and I really wanted to make sure if I'm putting my energy into something and it's my time – like I really want to. Well, we feel really appreciate passionately you. Like about you, it. Yeah, you add a lot to the program, I'm, and mm. we, we. It's a good balance when when Adine's there. Yeah, we really feel like there's a huge difference when you're there. So yeah. appreciate you making that decision. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate you for extending the option for me to even do that. Yeah, it's been cool. It's been cool having a bunch of different. Yeah, really. Some female Because then I can show up place. late. Because yeah. yeah. then I can just show up late. And yeah, you, yeah. Guys, you guys are like already doing up. the work. The dean's always <laughs> on time. <laughs> was like, Wait, are you guys turning up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ten minutes. The dean's are on time. The dean's are like, thank goodness someone's actually responsible. Man, who's got training today? That's Kira's favorite text. Who's got? Who's at training today? Exactly. It's uh, it's been amazing. So I can can move away. Um, mm. No, it's been really good. Mm. It's it's uh, and it's also thanks for coming here. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah. No, we really appreciate that because some, sometimes we need, it just brings the energy. It's just a different energy when we have. Tim's the putting female on a deeper voice. The, the female he's, been, he's being the much female nicer. Because I want to ask he's about, about uh, how we, f we, we almost talked about this, about Andrew Tate. Yeah. I want to ask if you guys know what this is, who this is. Okay, no, we don't need it. Okay, no problem. It's 7.30. No dog. worries. Man, that's a whole. That's, that's next episode. That's next episode. episode bro. That's next time. Let's talk about that. But uh, you know, that's next episode. But what about you? Instead what? of avoiding it, what are you? Are you looking at yourself at the moment? I'm doing it. You're doing I'm doing it, it. every okay. every fucking day. I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. And how many? I mean, you know, how many people actually do that? They spend time on themselves, look at themselves, and say, you know, like, what do I want to do, and how am I going to do it? And and are serious about themselves. I don't, I don't know if there is a lot of people who are serious about themselves. I agree with that so much. I agree with that so much. My best friend and I have this conversation all the time. It's like for us to be doing the work that we're doing at 29 and 30, some people are never going to do that. Some people will never be self-aware. Like they just never will. And I think what we're all doing, which it sounds like we're all, which is so cool again, yeah. that Thanks. it's just, yeah, really cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then it gets addicting. Well, again, it comes back it is, to what you said. Is. You're yeah. the it's only addicting. person, like, like you know, you're the only version of this that's ever come together. You know, in terms of um, you know atoms and yeah. cells and mm. and all the circumstances and this time and place has only ever been one of you ever made, and there only will ever be one of you ever made. Yeah, that's it. Period. And I think that that gets lost. Like, mm. you try to do it any other way instead of being able to go. You know what? This is actually. This is actually. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I got. But it's all I got, and it's also pretty amazing. Like, yeah. like the fact that there's only one of these ever made. Yeah. Like, like forever. Like, this is it. Yeah. For eternity, this is it. Yeah. 
And what am I doing with that? Oh, I'm upset. I'm you know, this, I'm that. Like, I'm trying to fit in. I hope people like me instead of going, you know what? Like, let me just have a close look at what this is and sort of work out what I want to do with yeah. it. Because you yeah. get, you literally have one chance, maybe short, you know, 80 short years. Mm. You know what I mean? If you're lucky, maybe less, maybe 40, maybe 50, you know? So what are you doing with it? And once you realize that, it's kind of freeing. You're like, yeah. Yeah, I, I get that you don't like me. Bad luck. Yeah, like, yeah I only got five cool. more years, bro. I don't care what you can think about. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, and, and, you know, when you realize how uh, mortal you are, like how quickly you could die, how mm. quickly you could all end, how changes. quickly, well, then you just, you know, every day is different rather than going, oh, you know, in five years' time, I'll get to this. I'll you know, in 10 this. years' time, yeah. I'll get to this. You're like, as Renko said, focus every day on seeing what you can do. You know, you could die tomorrow and you've done your best regardless. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're happy with that. So, you know, I think in the end, like, it's cool being at St. James and being around a bunch of people who are on that same page. Mm. And the basketball is kind of a... Um, like extra. Yeah, and segue, but mm. really, like, everyone there is trying to work out what they're doing. So. But, like, being on that pursuit is the dream. You know, that's that's the switch. Like, doing it is the dream. Yeah. Like, even, like, the podcast stuff. We've tried how many times before we first did the episode last week. Yeah. Yeah. How many times have I called you guys over, like, yo, let's let's do it here. We did one in the gym. We did one at Dean's house. We, And it never quite... But like, but people, oh yeah, like uh, you're finally doing it, or where do you want to go with it? I'm like, just doing it, like, is the dream, like, uh, like, yeah. it's, and then we'll figure it out as we go. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah like, like, instead of not doing it, just do it and see what happens. You know, you write it, yeah. the book, just write the book, see yeah. what happens. You know, yeah. if that's it, then then the book's done. You nice. know, like, like build your furniture. Straight up, yeah. <laughs> leave it and, and, and market it. it. Market it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> ladies, it's ladies. Been a, it's been a pleasure. This is very right here. I oh, think wow. we can still hear you. But no, thanks for thanks for coming, guys. I was uh I feel like we can go way more. What's that? <laughs> but I like No, but I think we could if we keep it to an hour, I think yeah. we could go for a long time. Yeah. Because actually when you get into that space and you get in a flow, yeah. yeah. Like you can keep having the conversations. And we mm. got people who are in that space. Mm. It's pretty cool. So Because I want to get out of that. Performance mode. Everyone knows. Like you, you yeah, watch yeah. like you watch podcasts on 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 online. Yeah, and you and can tell it's a performance. That's what I'm trying to like get out of. Don't I like don't like. I feel like that. That's his vibe. Do yeah, it's, like not, that? it's no, no, it's no, not. That's, yeah. that's right. But I still think we keep it to an hour. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, because yeah. then like, well, like that, see the hour. Like, all right. So while we're doing it, it's like it puts pressure. Like, all right, let's go to this. Damn, let's no, go to this. but there's no pressure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, like, if you don't feel it, if we just, because if we get to a topic, yeah. we get to a topic, because yeah. it's not about the topic, it's about the energy and mm. the realness of it. Right. And, and then, I mean, you could always do a part two for things, if you really like 